Shut up and sit down. And we're live. Welcome to the Chaos and Pain podcast, the Hate Cast, where you can get all of your rage out in one place. Well, all of Jamie's rage out. How are you doing today? <laughs> awesome. Awesome. How about yourself? Uh, you know, I, uh, as fate would have it, I uh, have an injury that kind of caused me to take the day off in the gym, so it's kind of poetic that we get this thing started early. It's kind of... All right. I guess. What's your injury? Oh, pfft. man, I was feeling really good. So me and the wife were sitting in, uh, sitting around on Valentine's Day, and we decided to, like, I decided to go off my rocker on my diet and stuff like that. So I had probably about four to 5,000 calories over what I normally have. And my weight went up, of course, the next day. So most injuries, in my experience, happen when you're feeling really good. Oh, and, absolutely. Uh, you never hurt yourself when, you have, when you're feeling like shit. And I was feeling really good, and I had, you know, I was uh, going in there, I was switching to high bar squats for a little while, just because I've been deadlifting twice a week for a while, and my lower back's trying to yell at me. So, I switched to high bar squats, I fucking went down, I squat back up, and the bar came off of my back, and then back down on my traps, and I felt a not so good feeling, so, <laughs> fine, 135 caused that. Fuck my life. You know what? I I can actually attest to the fact that I have also injured myself with 135. I uh, I hadn't jump squatted in about a year and a half, and I was feeling froggy, and um, I had a shitload of ferox in me. I think I had like two scoops or two and a half scoops. So I mean, I was I was riding high off a gram of caffeine just to start with, and um, so I was in a new gym, and it was this really Fru Fru Gym called Steel Fitness. Now I'm training at Lifetime, which is even more fancy. But uh, oh, yeah. Steel actually had a had a valet, and uh, so i you know there's all these soccer moms and shit around, and I uh, decided I was going to jump squat because I was feeling good, and so I didn't realize they had Alico bars in the squat racks. I don't know why the fuck. I guess because they were expensive, so they put Alico bars in the squat racks. So they got these ins- insanely whippy Ollie bars in the squat racks. I did one rep, jumped off the ground. I jumped way too hard because I had so much ferox in me. <clears throat> Hit the ground slightly wrong. Bar bounced off my back, but I hung on to it because I'm a dipshit. And just flew backwards into the back of the rack and then s- cut underneath it. And it, it, like, smacked me in the back of the head. And then I just stood up with it and racked it as quickly as possible and grabbed my shit and left. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I, was, yeah, I, I was in pain for, like, three weeks after that. Yeah, well, thankfully, I can actually raise my arms today. So yesterday I had, I had trouble like, like I couldn't comb my hair. So it'll it'll be fine Jesus. though. <laughs> so so what exactly did you injure then? Uh, I'm That's... thinking it's uh, something up in my traps. So, so you know the old uh, your your power lifter you probably know you know explode up. Like I took that a little yeah. too literal and the bar just flew off and then it hit me right back smack right down. It was a stiff bar, but you know. I'm dieting right now, and the uh, my vertebrae is showing kind of in in the back of me. So, mm-hmm. uh, just because when you get lean and stuff like that, I mean, you know, I mean, you'll see these fucking IFBB pros using squat pads for a reason. Their their vertebrae are sticking out; it hurts, you know. Yeah. Unless unless they of course have traps, but I'm not that lucky. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, but anyway, yeah, just uh, you know, just everyday little hiccup i mean if you're not fucking lifting heavy you know and you're not injured what are you doing in life Um, well you know what one thing we should do is i think we should make the james con from the program distinction between and for anybody who hasn't seen the program it's a fucking amazing football movie from the mid 90s but um a distinction between hurt and injured if you're hurt you can still play if you're injured go sit your ass on the bench so, right, uh, right. so you're, you're just hurt at this point. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm, I completely agree with that. No, I'm, uh, although I did kind of use it as an excuse not to train today because I was, you know, I got, uh, 20, uh, rep sets of lat pull downs that I've got to do and I can't raise my arms, so it's fine. <laughs> yeah, I think but, that's a fairly decent reason to, uh, I mean, I probably would have gone in the gym and road instead of doing pull downs, but 
That's because I'm a lunatic. So. Hey, you know what, man? I uh, I actually I thought about going in there and just doing a shit ton of cardio because it's just gonna make me, you know, get cut faster. But I just I just I, I don't I'm not about that cardio life much of it. So, uh, you know, I'm just not a fan of a lot of cardio unnecessarily. But at the same yeah, time, yeah, I don't do I've any cardio. It. So yeah, no, I don't usually any more except for like the warm-up stuff because it's been like cold as balls here so uh, um you know 10 minutes just to to get you know the old rectal temperature the the because <laughs> that that's what the study on warm-ups is done with you know it's increases of rectal temperature that they uh attributed to decreased injuries so it's pretty cool. I, I I don't know if that would be distracting in a pleasant way or distracting in an unpleasant way to have somebody jam a thermometer up my ass while I'm working out. You know, that made a might have made him run faster. I don't know. Like you know, I'd run away. But um, anyway, so okay to start this thing off uh, for the people who don't know you because you've kind of been working in the background for a little bit. Uh, why should they give a shit about your opinion? I guess is what I'm. I'm kind of getting that. Powerlifter, okay. powerlifter at one time, world record holder at one time, maybe. You, yeah, you I, uh, I, I don't like calling myself a powerlifter because uh, I just think the sport is stupid. I, I'm a, I call myself a strength athlete, but uh, yeah, I, um, just to piss off the internet in 2012, I, uh, in my third or fourth powerlifting meet ever, broke a 40-year-old world record in total uh, raw. My raw total was uh, 17.05, and um, I tied the uh, the squat record at uh, 6.50. And body weight wise, what was that at? It was 181. Oh, okay. Well, damn, that's yep. a weight I'll never see again. Um, oh, it's it's a weight that I I only see for a, a couple of minutes while I'm standing on the scale. That's that's it. Oh, okay, I got gotcha. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, making making weight this coming fall is going to be. If it if I'm able to do it, it's going to involve uh, my girlfriend hanging bags for me in the uh, in the hotel room afterwards because I'm not going to be able to rehydrate without <laughs> without like medical science. Oh man, you know what they uh, they just didn't they just pull IV rehydration from MMA or UFC? I think, uh, I think so. Yeah. yeah. A- a- yeah anyway, I, did you um, see that uh, that that one gigantic? chick from brazil was supposed to fight a tiny little it was one of those like the cyborg. you know the tiny yeah no it wasn't cyborg this chick okay. makes cyborg look tiny she they were she was supposed to come in at like 201 or something like that and the chick she was fighting was 160 but you know like a japanese she you know fighting bob sap or whatever she was like yeah fine whatever i'll because she's a pro wrestler she was like i got it well the chick rolled in at 232 and not fat i got it I wish I remembered her name. I mean, she had like a full six pack, and actually a good-looking woman. And yeah. uh, but Jesus, it would have been exactly like Bob Sapp fighting uh, Antonio Nogueira and just like turning him upside down and smashing him repeatedly into the mat like he was King Kong. Yeah, just <laughs> ridiculous. Yeah. Um, so a little bit about me for for the people who have uh, who have tuned in to listen to this thing. So I am just somebody that they found on the internet who seemed like they knew uh, something, right? I, I kind of got with Cass and Payne about uh, three, four years ago. I don't, I'm not sure, but um, I just you know I was on the forums helping people, and then they found out I was six five. They found out I had okay looking legs, okay looking triceps, you know. Um, You're six five. I that's that's the fucking illusion. I'm like six five and two hundred fifty pounds right now. Holy fucking hell! You're almost a full to- or a full foot taller than me. Depending yeah. on how heavy I've been squatting, you are a full foot taller than me. Well, hey man, that's why I made the comment about one eighty one. I'll, I'll, it's such bullshit dealing with height and and getting into you know I'm either stupid or crazy by getting into the whole fitness thing, like competitive wise being 6'5", but we'll see which one that is later down the line. So, but um, I'm going to be competing here in 2022. The timeline's kind of moved up because me and the wife are, are trying to trying for a baby right now. And that's oh, congratulations. 
Hey, you know what? I gotta I gotta catch up to the other member of Cast Pain, Wayne. I gotta. Uh, has he made yeah. that public? Uh, yes. On um, yes. No. Yes, he has. I did not know. Yeah, I no, knew there I'm was not. some. There's some like cut off where you're not supposed to tell people, and so I just didn't say shit. Nah, Lawrence. Uh, his wife has got a uh, Facebook post up about it. I'm pretty sure it's 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 kosher. Oh. Now. But gotcha. congratulations to that man. He's uh, he yes. works hard, and now he's gonna have to sleep less. So for a little while at least. But um, anyway, let's see here what we have next in the docket. So, how's your oh, training I just, going? Uh, I just sent you the, uh, her name's Gabby Garcia, for anybody who wants to Google it. Uh, Gabby the, the, Garcia. Yeah, the, chick's, the chick fighter's name. Uh, but anyway, training's going uh, amazingly. I actually just posted something yesterday that just outlined how ridiculously chaotic my, the company's name, for anybody who doesn't know, is based on my blog, and my blog is based on my training style. Uh, it's just very chaotic and very and painful. Life. Oh. What's that? I would say it's even based on life. Chaos yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'd I say that's fairly accurate. Um, yeah, but uh, training has been going phenomenally. I just, I'm, I'm literally stronger at the end of a workout as compared to the beginning of it. Um, it I, I haven't been this enthusiastic about training since high school or college, so... Well, that's good to hear. I, I read your latest blog post, and you had mentioned that you changed, which we'll get into in another podcast, give us a little bit more uh, content there, but you changed your methodology just a little bit on certain things. So, and I think Yeah, a- I, imagine, I imagine that made you smile, being a bodybuilder. Uh, yeah, uh, no, well, hmm. you know, a lot, of the, a lot of the things bodybuilders do make me cringe. Uh, so I can't really attest to that. Like, well, we'll have to. Uh, we'll definitely have to get into that at a later podcast. We'll talk about Bob Chicharillo and his uh, machines-only workouts and things. Yeah. Well, you know, more power to you if it works for you. But yeah, we'll get into that later. But uh, but uh, my training, my training is going well as well. It's um, you know, it's like I was explaining to you. There's no real way to explain my methodology. It's just uh, I'm I'm trying to find what I should specialize in, but it's kind of hard being six five and my leverage is working against me. But like I said, we'll see. Strongman is definitely something you should look into. I mean, Mountain is six eight. Yeah, um, and Brian Shaw six eight, and um, yeah, Eddie Hall of course is a pot belly pig from he's a power belly. I love it. Um, <laughs> man, he's just a fucking beast. He is the beast. But, uh... Um, yeah. But anyway, so... But I will say this. Uh, one of the things that has me looking at different venues is health. And I just wanted to say that to make this segue. So, if you guys don't know, health is something you should take seriously. And, you know, us being part of Chaos and Pain, of course, we're a supplement company and everything like that. Now, usually in podcasts, you would have people break for these sponsor breaks, but uh, I thought I'd get uh, Jamie to kind of chime in on this before we get to the the uh, the meat and potatoes of this podcast, which is which is the no fat movement. And we'll get into that here in a second. But I would just like to tell everybody, you know, to take their health seriously, and and one of the ways that you can do that is making sure that you have fruits and vegetables in your goddamn diet it's so important so overlooked the bodybuilders in the 90s kind of had it right the powerlifters in the 90s kind of had it right like fucking meat potatoes like fucking vegetable fruit heavy you know it's just a healthier way of eating and healthier way of living and um one of those things that you can do if you know you struggle with that is use a greens powder and uh fruits powder which by the way Cassian Pain Cells. Guy is a tremendous product. It can be used as a replacement for a multivitamin. It can be used as a uh, you know insurance on top of your multivitamin. It can it can even be used if you're going out. My favorite use of it is if you're going out on a vacation with a family or something like that. You take a greens powder with you because who wants to eat vegetables on their vacation? Who wants to <laughs> shove in a hundred grams of broccoli here, hundred grams of spinach here? No, just fucking just just take that some bitch in a. Sh- and a shaker cup with you, have it ready to go, 
and have your health in check. Now, what's your thoughts on, on all that stuff and the health aspect of, of fitness, which is, in my opinion, neglected? And, you know. uh, I, I have to admit that I fall prey to the uh, I need to fuel training. I'm, not, I, I'm really not a person who focuses on, uh, on my overall health. I find that health is a byproduct of training hard and eating well. Uh, but I definitely – I've been recommending Green's products since I started writing the blog because I have a violent antipathy towards eating fruits and vegetables. So uh, so I was excited when we started producing Gaia because, one, it doesn't taste like you're chewing on <clears throat> seaweed. And because uh, a lot of those Green products, you know, they're touted to taste decent and then it ends up you, like you put it in your protein shake and you're like, well, now the protein shake's going in the trash because it tastes like it tastes like slightly chocolate flavored grass. So, uh, yeah, I, I was very excited about Gaia. And, uh, yeah, I've actually got Wayne sending me a couple bottles of that uh, this weekend. So It's awesome to hear. And, and another thing, too, is what people don't realize is people with allergies like myself like i have to take flonase because my allergies are just so bad like my body revolts against me when i go outside and um a lot of the problems with other people's uh greens powders is they have wheatgrass they have like literal long clippings in there which is some of the flavor you mentioned some of the bad flavoring out there is they they put things that are hard to flavor in it gaia doesn't doesn't have that problem and it's it's allergy people approved so that's pretty cool yeah, I'm literally allergic to life. The house I'm living in right now is 110 years old, and I, I take Zyrtec D twice a day because I just feel like I'm going to die otherwise. I live on antihistamines, man. But speaking of good segues, no fat. Yeah, that was, a, that was an excellent segue. Um, awesome. The best segues. I've been told by friends <laughs> the very best segues. Um. But I just, you know, I was unaware of exactly how delusional this stuff was until you gave me the uh, the tools to kind of, you know, cram all this in like I'm going to college again. Well, so, I, so uh, to give you a bit of background on why I, why I picked this, um, this first came to my attention on bodybuilding.com when I was in grad school in Austria in 2007. Okay. All these kids were talking about abstaining from masturbation for like a week or two at a time because it uh, supposedly spiked your testosterone at the end of the week. Yeah. Well, I, I knew from personal experience that abstaining from masturbation or abstaining from coming uh, gives you erectile dysfunction. Uh, it, it, I, like, uh, I've written about it, but to long story short, old guy at the gym told me if you bust a nut then you lose energy and so you that's energy you could put into weights and you'll get bigger if you don't if you don't nut so i didn't nut for like a year and then uh and then my dick didn't work i went to a i went to a urologist and he started laughing and he was like wait you're serious and i was like yes and he was like that is the dumbest thing i've ever heard and he grabbed me by the shoulders and he was like jerk off three times a day i don't care what you have to do go into the bathroom if you're at a bus station go into the corner just be like a homeless person just jerk off three times a day i don't care what you have to do and i was like all right i've been doing that ever since i'm 41 i've never had a problem getting it up by the way, I, I, I lived in Austin. Chaos and Pain does not support the idea of jerking off on a bus while people are watching. Please no, don't no, do that. No, no, bus it station. Makes the ride. Bus station. Okay. Well, it makes the ride very uncomfortable. So. I Yeah, I can imagine. But so, so that's 2007. And then, you know, I figured, like, I had done my best to squash it because I posted a bunch of uh, science to show that all that was idiocy. And, um, and then... There, there's now, like, so as you mentioned, I kind of faded in the background. I just got burned out on training and talking about training and everything. Yeah. So I, uh, I kind of just got out of the scene. I came back, and all of these guys who had been mediocre lifters but, like, had written about training are now, like, vaunted strength coaches somehow. And then they decided they wanted to become life coaches. So they're giving all this ridiculous relationship advice meanwhile i know two of them two of them personally i have seen their dick in dick pics at least three or four times from different girls hell yeah like they're sending the dick pics all over the place but giving relationship advice about monogamy they're they're, they're telling people now not to jerk off because they're telling people who already have ed not to jerk off because it'll cure their ed which as we will get into the science there isn't there but uh 
it just doesn't make any fucking sense. And it's so intellectually dishonest. I figured we had to cover it just so we could kind of set the record straight. Yeah, so the no, the no fat movement, just to be clear, was invented on a car dealership website. <laughs> uh, this sounds like you were making it up, but no, you're, you're not making this up. I, you know, I don't really follow closely with this stuff because, you know, like there was that myth about uh, boxers, you know, uh, back in the day and, and football players like don't have sex before playoffs, and, you know, whatever. And they, they, they busted that a long, a long time ago, like long time ago. And then all of a sudden, this car dealership had website, and then onto this Vice article, and then onto this twenty-seven-year-old who's like suicidal, and then he doesn't fat for thirty days, and it cured his ED. I mean, this stuff literally sounds like somebody was just thinking, "What's what's the what's the most bullshit thing that I can just pull out of my ass?" You know, it sounds made up, but it's not, and um. My my favorite really is is this Vice article, and I will link that down in the description box below. And and it 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 literally has this dude, who, you know, may or may not be, you know, sexually active from the way that he acts, and um, <laughs> he he says that he basically replaced jerking off with uh with Edgar Allan Poe yoga and Kegels. I mean I. I, I don't I don't know I don't know how to respond. My brain hurts. It's trying the mental gymnastics to see where he's coming. The from. sentence the sentence even Edgar Allan Poe is giving me frustration boners. What in the sweet fuck? Well, I, I, I mean I love clear. Edgar Allan Poe. I love Edgar Allan Poe. Yeah. But there is nothing in Edgar Allan Poe that is in any way sexual that I can recall. Let's be clear, though. That guy looks like he owns a puka shell necklace. Let's be clear. Oh, okay. He and and not in the not in the hilarious and ironic way of uh, the dude from Workaholics. No, no. This dude's completely serious. He thinks, you know, I mean, in in my mind, he he owns a puka shell necklace. He he, you know, is really into the band Creed, which, by the way, they do have a fuck a couple good songs. Go fuck yourself. It's fine, whatever. But. <laughs> um, but you know, it's it's. But he's like into it in the 2010s. Um, I really don't know where to go with him. Like I, I don't know how to acknowledge that he exists on this planet. And he's fucking. Well, I must not jerk it, and he's putting that up on Snapchat. I, I I mean, it says it, it says in the article the subreddit for no fap, and no fap means no porn, no masturbation. It's it and it for and there's a I don't know if you read about the hard mode. Did you read about hard mode? No fap. I did. I just read about oh, that. Jesus the, Christ! You can't fuck either, and they recommend you do that for ninety days. So apparently, like having ridiculous amounts of sexual frustration, and you're already weird and unlikable. So now <laughs> you've added, uh, like desperation and psychosis on top of that. And, like, your back teeth are floating because you got so much cum in your body. And that is apparently going to make you sexually attractive to women. I, I just... It's, See, uh... what killed me is you sent me down a rabbit hole. You put the shit in front of my face, and then you expect me not to spend hours just, just reading just insanity. Look, this incel... What, by the way, what is incel? So an incel is an involuntary celibate. And the very, very amusing thing about incels and no-fappers is if you were to draw a Venn diagram of incels and no-fappers and their arguments and predilections, it would be a single circle. And that circle would be filled with bizarre anti-Semitic uh, theories because both no-fappers and incels will tell you – and I'm not making this up. I, I, you can go on no-fapp and look at it – that uh, Jews control the porn industry – and that they are attempting to turn alpha white males into beta cuckolds by cuckolding them to the women in porn, which demonstrates just a remarkable lack of understanding of the terms alpha, beta, and cuckold all at the same time. I've got an article coming out about how uh, the animal hierarchies, uh, the whole thing's bullshit, 
Uh, it's all bad science, and then these people fail to understand the science, and they also can't Google the definition of the word cuckold. And so, so, so they, they think they're all being cuckolded by Jews, and they think that women are evil, and that they're trying to... Uh, I mean, you'll read shit on incels.me, which, guys, if you have five it's minutes, golden. you want to just... It's gold. It, it's sheer pants-shitting craziness. People saying that chicks would rather fuck dogs than fuck real men, and all, I mean all kinds of crazy, craziness. But so they hate women. Their dicks don't work. They are, by and large, autistic. Uh, they hate Jews. Like, so it's just a single circle of this. And then there's also the MGTOW people, which is men going their own way. So oh, all no. of this is one circle of stupidity. And erectile dysfunction and sadness and ugliness. All of that piled into one failure pile in a sadness bowl of KFC glop. But, um, yeah, yeah no. so... Oh, it's, go, it's go ahead. Crazy. It's crazy. And, you know, I mean, we'll get into the science here in a minute because I think that's really where this stuff hits home because where, where we can take this stuff, you know, uh, take it back, kind of veer it back onto the right track here. Because... <laughs> There, there are there are certain studies out there that suggest that abstaining will increase your sperm count, but if you abstain for too long, it will decrease your sperm count. But if you don't do this, it does. I mean, it's it's a very sexual function is very very complicated. It's not just on off, right? Like um, you can have it's, a bad day actually, at work. It actually is very simple because basically, for all intents and purposes, your sexual system, your entire sexual being is a use it or lose it proposition and i right. think you can agree with that and so and the studies will show like constant masturbation means your body has to produce more sperm in order to f facilitate that like all that ejaculation or constant sex whatever it happens to be but and so your test levels are raised your hcg levels are raised so you don't need this period of abstinence to raise your levels all you have to do is just maintain a steady a steady state of uh of getting off right and and at the same time though i think that most of these people who believe that they're you know uh you said incel is a uh, involuntary celibacy which is again i i, I don't i that's not a concept that i can grasp right uh well, anyone well, can get laid well, Honestly. Well, why don't you to to the uh, to the no fappers and incels who are sitting there just bubbling over with impotent rage, just yeah. staring down at their their limp three inch penis. Uh, don't you know, stare too long and, though. That could be considered not hard mode. <laughs> oh yeah, exactly. Um, oh my God, there's a whole subset of porn I can get into about that as well. Um, uh, this will blow your mind. But uh, explain why to these people why you think that. Involuntary celibacy is actually a voluntary choice. Uh, well, involuntary celibacy. I mean, look, um, there's somebody for everybody out there, right? And and if there's not, you certainly do have ways of taking care of it, making sure that your urges are are, are taken care of, right? And I'm not talking about rape. I'm I'm talking about you know jerking off, and it's it's just it's natural, right? I mean, there's a reason why, you know, when you're, you know, for me when I was 11, uh, you know, uh, things happened, and I started you know getting strange feelings down there, and then I just did what's natural, right? Like every kid around 11, 12, 13, whatever, and um, and and there's nothing wrong with that. I think their problem is is they've you know, kind of, you know, poor pitiful me, you know, whatever. It's 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 almost like they're blaming society for their problems when it comes to uh, intimacy with another human or intimacy with themselves. Because that's another thing that I don't think anybody's looking at is, you know, you have to be comfortable with yourself to be intimate with yourself as well. So, you know, some people may actually just hate their penis. And that's <laughs> fine, <laughs> like, you know, but uh, but you see that more common in women, you know. Uh, the ones True. that do not masturbate, but, um, you know, uncomfortable with their body and everything like that. But I, I could see that happening in dudes, especially with the estrogen floating around. Um, I have actually, I have actually <laughs> raised my hand and said, check, please, on a first date when a chick told me she didn't masturbate. Check, please. Yeah. I'll, yeah. I'll, 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 get, I'll get this. Go ahead and finish your dinner. I'm getting the fuck out of here. <laughs> 
Well, there's nothing wrong with playing. If there's any females out there, there's nothing wrong with playing a little country on the clitor, okay? It's fine. <laughs> it's completely natural. Um, make beautiful music. Just, um, you know, I. it's voluntary because it is a choice. It's not... Nobody's... Fo- like nobody's nobody's cutting off your hands, you know. Oh well, but in terms of the the incels, they will masturbate. The thing is that if you if you read incels.me, they think that they are owed a virgin. Like no. they they want a, 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 yeah, they're owed a virgin, a, a, which demonstrates their complete lack of understanding of how little fun it is, by and large, to have sex with a virgin female. Correct. And. <laughs> Or a virgin male. I, I'm, I mean, none of us, you know, if the first time you play a sport, you're generally going to suck at it. And yep. especially if you're uncomfortable and then you're self-conscious, it's just going to be a fucking mess. Yeah, it's just not fun. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so, um, but they all think they, they all think they deserve it, uh, a virgin. Uh, they think, so they'll admit that they're, unattractive. They fail to understand that their personality is even more unattractive than their face. And if you Google these guys, like if you Google the term black pill, if you Google that and look at the videos, holy shit. Like if they looked like the comic book store owner on, uh, on South Park, uh, Simpsons. Simpsons. Yeah. They would, that would be a fucking improvement. And I mean, a drastic improvement, but you know what the fucked up thing is, is those guys like, those guys usually who end up looking like that usually end up with banging hot wives and shit. Like you can't. That's if they. That's if they have great personalities. If they have personalities that are even uglier than their face and their body, that's that's when you run into these issues. I am telling you right now, if you can't like, like eventually somebody throughout their lives will have sex with another human being. It's just inevitable, right? It's 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 one of those things. that's almost pretty much set in stone. Like even if you're like. 40 years old and the virgin. It's it's almost set in stone that it'll, it'll be okay, right? Um, but and, but then you're looking... These guys are all... Um, like, we'll have to link the link to MGTOW website as well. Yeah. They're looking up to guys look, like clearly autistic men, like Nikola Tesla and the Wright brothers and uh, Isaac, Sir Isaac Newton, um, who died virgins. And they're looking at them like they're some, like lofty example of what men can real men do and it's like so genghis khan wasn't a real man like what the fuck are we talking about see and I the don't... homophobia out of these guys so i once suggested to a to a an incel like why don't you guys just fuck each other like if chicks Good won't point. fuck you like <laughs> go ahead and fuck each other like that makes sense holy shit the homophobia out of these guys was shocking because you know you hear that you hear that all these millennials are supposed to be open-minded. Hell no, they are the most shockingly closed-minded, fucking sexually weird people I've ever encountered. Yeah, I mean, you know, part of me wants to believe that that's part of like the the disconnect of social media and stuff like that. But I just I really can't buy that either. I think, by and large, uh, most of these people who end up being more vocal about their their incel or uh, status or whatever i think you know they could be dealing with some mental illness issues uh so oh yeah it, uh, autism seems to run real deep in this these crowds well not even that like low serotonin i mean uh it can it can wreak havoc on your sexual function and, and, and other you know things. that provides us with a very excellent seg into our second product plug and i don't know what you're planning on pro- plugging but I do know that um, my one of my favorite formulas that I made for us was Hypnos, and it certainly does raise serotonin and dopamine by putting you into a deeper sleep. You know what? Hypnos is one of those things that just you can you can use it one night, and you can not all, not hooked right, but but you can certainly want that feeling again the next night because not only do you get lucid dreams from stuff like GABA and stuff like that which if you've ever experimented with GABA you pretty much know what to expect right it's it's fucking mm-hmm. cool stuff right before bed but um it, it also helps you uh if you know these people work in night shifts and everything it helps them regulate their sleep schedules which by the way is invaluable if you ever want to gain any muscle or, or lose any uh, body fat so it's just it really is a, a stellar product and, and you know Good segue into the, the 
the product placement there, but uh, it really is <laughs> something we, we truly do believe in. And as you'll find with all of our supplements, proper doses, transparent labels, all that, all that BS that makes us spectacular. We, uh, yeah. We and, it. and if you guys have any questions about the product, like, uh, at least half the products I personally formulated. So you can catch me on Facebook. You can catch me on Instagram. You can email me and you can ask me questions about why I did what I did. And I can give you straight up answers because everything I did is right out there for everyone to see. So, and I'll go ahead and link your social medias there and the description box as well. Awesome. Possible. So back, back to this, this no fat thing. Uh, the one, well, one last thing that I do want to say on this, cause are we about wrapping up here? Yeah, it looks like it. Although I can, uh, for uh, any any people out there who are thinking to themselves that, you know, because they, they went to too much church as a kid or something, that uh, masturbation is unnatural, here are a few examples of animals that have been caught masturbating in public. Penguins, porcupines, walruses, horses, squirrels, and dolphins. And uh, there's a video on YouTube of a dolphin masturbating with a beheaded fish. Hell yeah. They also use they use live eels to masturbate. That is amazing. Um, yes. There's actual other videos of that, too, if you'd like to Google that with humans, but we'll leave that out for right now. Um, Masturbating with a beheaded fish? It No, eels. It's a thing. It's a thing. Oh, yep. Oh, yeah, me. yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's very Japanese. That is that's exceptionally, awesome. exceptionally Japanese. Yeah. But, um, but I would just like to wrap it up saying that, um, you know, the science really doesn't add up to the no... The no uh, fat movement. Hard mode is just, it's an excuse to put yourself into misery, right? It's not, you're not a white knight. It's not valorous. It's, uh, it's not going to make you time. better with women at all. Yeah. It is going to make you, it's going to make you weird and unpleasant to be around. And another thing with this no fat, I mean, it, it, it has the potential to make people, uh, start to blame the world instead of work on themselves, you know, because if you just did 10% better today than you were yesterday, do you know how much of a fucking improvement that would add up over time? And I'm sorry, guys, that think that women owe you sex, but maybe you need to work on your personality. It's just, it's, that is one of the major keys. Even when I was bigger, because I used to be 430 pounds, um, the personality is one thing I always had. And it's something that I had to work on, and I didn't go around, you know, saying I was in cell or I was this or that. I just fucking worked hard to get what I wanted, you know. It's it's um, as with anything in life. Uh, and for those people who think that they're too ugly to get laid, it's it's ninety nine percent of the time not true because anyone can get laid. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and so. and also, I I want to I'll give my like go to like if I want to try to hook up at a bar, I have a go to move that I I wouldn't say it works a hundred percent of the time, but I mean fifty percent of the time I'll, I'll like I'll go home with somebody if I want to, and it I do it even when I don't want to hook up, but I will it's the easiest it's the easiest soft opener ever to use in a bar ever. Bring a book to the bar. Sit at the bar and read. Guaranteed, a woman will ask you why you're reading at the bar or ask you about the book you're reading. Or if if a woman's not asking you about it, but a woman sit, happens to be sitting next to you, you know, if you happen to catch her eye, ask her if she has any good book recommendations. It's the it's the softest opener ever, and it'll almost always start a conversation. Yeah. Well, that's good tips. I uh, I went the funny guy route, right? Uh, just bullshit and generally being their friend will sometimes open the door you didn't even know you had access to. So. Oh, yeah, that whole friend zoning thing is fucking bullshit. <laughs> you can claw your way out of the friend zone. <laughs> you, you can, can ram through You can that scratch bit. it. Exactly. Yeah. But, um, no, I think that, that about wraps it up. And as always, don't... Uh, don't go spreading this stuff around. Don't support the movement. I mean, we're just we're shining a light on the stupidity because uh, you know light, sunshine is the best disinfectant when it comes to this stuff. Um, yeah, and a bunch of idiots in a room together screaming crazy shit at each other isn't doing the world any good. <laughs> well, um, I don't know if they if they fill that chamber with gas, maybe. 
But the uh, but that <laughs> to the camps. Us, oh, no, we're not anti-Semitic. Calm down, internet. Oh, <laughs> no. Um, but uh, so that leads us to I think I think we've kind of talked about that enough, and and we will have other episodes on this because it's it's always developing. And man, like I said, you sent me down a rabbit hole, and oh yeah, this uh, we this could might, talk about this for weeks. This might be part one of of several. You know, <laughs> so um, I did. We will be talk... discussing training though and diet at some <laughs> point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's kind of what I wanted to go into. So the state of the of the cast, state ah. of the hate cast. So uh, Jamie and I, of course, will be probably the main host of this podcast. We'll get Wayne Banks in here, which is a number me- another member of the cast and paint team. Uh, we will get other fitness celebrities and all that stuff, and and the training stuff is here to is 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 coming. So we just haven't planned. This was to the top of our, you know, priority chart because it's just, man. And and sort of, I, w- I would call this, like, if we're going to start numbering episodes, I'd call this episode zero since we're just kind of uh, dipping our toes in the water. Yeah. And if there's anything that you guys would like to see, you need to let us know via Facebook. Um, I'm usually on the, the Cast and Pain Facebook as well as my personal Facebook Jamie, you can contact him on Facebook. You can contact him on Instagram. Um, all that I'm also on the uh, I'm on the cast. But whenever somebody answers you on the Chaos and Pain Facebook, it's either Bryce or I. So yeah, so we got you covered there. We're also on Anabolic Minds too, which is a superb form for for gear and and training and all that stuff. So I'm usually on there a lot too under the username Pyrobat. So yeah, and I'm uh, at Jamie Chaos on Instagram, and Jamie Lewis eighty three on Facebook. There you go. One last thing before we jump, we we jet here. I do have two questions. Okay. All right. So I'd like to do a question and answer thing at the end of these podcasts, kind of a little uh, wrap up. So uh, we got a question from Facebook. Thoughts on uh, Mondafil. So, oh, Modenafil? Modenafil, yeah. yeah. Um, so I've used... As, wait, Modenafil is... Um, that's the uh, uh, the go pill, right? Uh, anti-narcolepsy, yeah. 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 Um, so there's two of them. There's Sildenafil and Modafil, correct? Prog- Provigil. Ah, oh, man. Provi- Pro- yeah, Provigil. Yeah, Provigil, I th- yeah, so I've used Provigil, um, and I I love that stuff. It's Provigil really. I mean, it's it doesn't ha- it doesn't get you wired, but it's I don't want to make a, an illicit drug analogy, but it, say if you were to be in Colombia as opposed to say in a trailer park. Yeah, say you were in say you were in Colombia as opposed to a trailer park. It's more of a Colombia experience without the like. You're talking. Oh, too much to the people around you and telling them shit you probably shouldn't. There's less of that and more of just like life is just sort of a uh, a, a slideshow. Like a, uh, it, it's like everything is very very clear to you, uh, and blinking is seems irrelevant. Um, so I, I love it for that. Uh, there is online there is a precursor to modenafil that it's called adrafinil that uh, gets sold by places like Smart Powder and stuff like that. Right. Uh, it's my experience that, that stuff is all bunk. I, I've never had it work like uh, modenafil does. Yeah, the the best place to probably get it is something that we can't discuss here. So. Yeah. Uh, with that being said, or, or you could consult your doctor and explain to them that you have terrible, terrible narcolepsy, and see if they'll prescribe it for you. Just the worst. Yeah, I can't. Uh, I can't stay awake. Uh, no, it's. Uh, I, I like it. I will say that it's uh, better used if cycled. Like if you come off of it and then come on. I don't. I don't believe that it makes a great everyday thing, because you tend to kind of have a feeling that that's your new baseline and I think that in the long term that can get pretty gnarly if you ever uh, lose the source that you find with it or if you 
just like uh, you know dieting for pre-contest. I don't I don't think it's great dieting for pre-contest or anything. So, um, just because dependency and and all that stuff. It's great. I think it can be, you know, it's it's not one of the best things in the world out there. Uh, I don't honestly see it being better in the long term than caffeine. Honestly. It's good to experiment with, though. Um, yeah, yeah. I think, the like you said, the um, developing dependency on caffeine leaves you with a headache. Developing with a, a dependency on modinophil probably leaves you with more like a meth addiction, so. Right, right. <laughs> so... And uh, uh, I got a, uh, it's not a question exactly, but um, he said, there's a qu another question or another comment that I'd like to read you. I know Jamie likes no pet, no pet. Um, whatever I got a hold of did nothing for me. I would say that's pretty common right now. So. Um, it's common? To get bunk no pet from, yeah. So uh, not in any uh, of our know, stuff. I, I haven't. But. No, I haven't. I haven't bought no pept by itself uh, since we started making Genius, um, which is another product I formulated myself. Um, yeah, I've never, I've never had that issue. I've also never. I don't know what in the hell brain fog is. Wayne told me that some people get brain fog from Genius. I don't, I'm not certain what it is. The people, the incels, were talking about having brain fog from masturbating too much. Can you tell me <laughs> what brain fog is? Okay, brain fog is like you have an idea, and you can't seem to grasp the concept of it. It's on the tip of your tongue, but you can't grasp the concept of it. Now, Like now you're trying to remember to a descriptive term for something, and you can't recall the word? Right, kind of. Um, okay. Yeah, uh, or, um, you know, uh, getting up... Uh, uh, have you ever been low blood pressure? No. Or low blood sugar? Uh, I mean, as a kid, I got hypoglycemic, but, uh, when I, you know, cause I was eating too much candy or something, but it's, it's just a state of confusion, right? And it's become okay. popularized to kind of blame supplements for that when it's really just overuse of stimulants in my opinion. Um, cause or you know, get yeah. more sleep. Yeah. For fuck's sake, man, you just hit it right on the head too. I mean. Enough people don't, uh, there's too many people that do not regulate their sleep. Um, yeah, and they're staying up all hours, or, I mean, how many times, like, have you ever worked real late, and then, uh, because sometimes, I, sometimes I'll pull a Hunter S. Thompson, and I'll start writing at midnight, and I'll be, it'll be like 4 a.m., and I'm still writing, and I'll look at my Facebook thing, and I'll see these people, they're like, Waking up in the middle of the night and checking their fucking Facebook, and it's, what the fuck is wrong with you? Just stay in bed, and keep your phone off, and stay asleep. What, everybody's busy with Facebook. Like, who the fuck do you need to talk to in the middle of the night? Well, it's just like, um, you know, I mean, uh, I feel bad for the people in Florida that, that had that mass shooting, but it's just like those people just, like, instead of going for help, recording it and putting it on Snapchat. I mean, like... they That didn't actually okay. happen, did it? Yep. So, Instead of whipping their phone at the guy's head in an effort to kill him or something. No, no, no. It was, I believe it was in a recent shooting where they literally recorded the bullet holes in the on the computer in the lab before contacting the authorities. Jesus, what fucking idiots. So That's um, that's when you deserve to get shot. <laughs> well, uh, you know, my heart does go out for those people that lost their lives on Valentine's Day, but but uh, in those situations, it's better to contact authority. Anyway, uh, yeah, people are distracted with a with a lot of things, and um, it's also this. You oh, know, I get uh, well, I get too one other thing I'd, I'd like to go ahead. drop in real quick is that uh, on incels.me, they were uh, they were holding that guy up as a uh, as a hero. What the fuck? The, uh, the, the shooter from because he they I think he's an incel apparently, so uh, th there's been one other incel shooter his name is Elliot Rogers and so the way that they write hero is H like lowercase H capital E R lowercase O to reference Elliot Rogers. I do have to ask is are they just maiming real hard or are they actually serious? No, they're dead serious. Okay, and I think that's a good time to end it today. Yeah, yep. So, I think my brain can't handle anymore. 
<laughs> my fucking god. What have you done to me? I'm not gonna be able to sleep tonight. Uh, this is I'm... this is gonna be every episode. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna bring your world crashing down around your ears. I, I'm not gonna be able to sleep tonight. I'm gonna get four hours of sleep while checking my Hypnos. Facebook simultaneously. I mean, it just ah. <laughs> uh... But all right, guys. So if you like this video, go ahead and toss us a like. If you didn't like this video, well, you can go fuck yourself. And please, or subscribe. you can give us advice on how to make it better. Yeah, either or. But, um, you know, go ahead and uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel because we will be uh, kind of revitalizing this channel. I know it's been in kind of a lull, but that's because we had, I mean, I had, I don't know about you, but I had a busy past couple of years. Busy, busy. So, and uh, Jamie Lewis is back on the podcast. So, even yes, more motivated. Yes, and so. back in the lifting world. Hell Yeah. Oh, that is one more thing. Man, I keep one more thing. Um, so, do you have any meat plans? Yeah, I'm planning on doing... Uh, it's September 22nd, I believe. It's Branch Warren's... Um, his bodybuilding show that he's replacing the Night of Champions with. Okay. It's a UPA meet in Chicago. Awesome. So, we'll look forward to seeing you there. And we'll put all the links down in the description. Everything's going to be fine. We might actually be doing a sale next podcast, so please be on the lookout for that to go along with the podcast for our listeners. So thanks for watching, and this is Bryce Allen signing out and Jamie Lewis. All right, later, guys. Okay. All right, see you in the next one.